The new Tesla app has hit the streets. The Gigafactory is roaring to life. Yet another example of Tesla safety and another trickle out of the Model 3 rumor mill. Here are your Tesla tidbits for February 13th, 2017. We're kicking off the week with help from MKBHD, Teslarati, and Electrek on this one. After a couple of teases, the new Tesla app has hit the app stores. Minus the widget and fingerprint functionality, this is just a UI overhaul. However, it is a very pretty UI overhaul. On top of that, the outlets report that the app has also picked up a performance boost. So if you were hoping for seat heater control or defrost abilities if you live in a cold climate, well, that's going to have to wait. We've yet to see the Android widgets available, so if an owner out there wants to snap some screenshots and post them, it'd be quite appreciated. Marcus Brownlee, a.k.a. MKBHD, put out a video reviewing the app. As usual, it's very well done and gives a great tour of the new digs. For those of us out here that aren't owners and still have to dream, it's worth your time. The rest of you, go grab that new shiny. Electric has an interesting story visiting a topic that was one touted by Tesla's detractors. The Gigafactory has been pointed at as a Potemkin village. For those unfamiliar with the term, as I was until today, it means to show a facade that is meant to make a situation appear better than it actually is. Obviously, the parallel is that the Gigafactory is viewed as a giant shiny shell with nothing inside. Fortunately for fans of the company, the factory is now producing cells, power walls, and power packs. And due to this, we get a picture of the parking lot of the factory and its sea of cars. And this is only with a 1,000 out of the promised 6,500 total expected employees at the factory, and only one-tenth of what the company believes they may employ at the factory eventually. It's a good start, and good to see the factory humming. Last week saw an accident where a semi rear-ended a Model S, and the owner walked away reasonably unscathed. The drive interviewed Mike Gardner, the owner. Unfortunately for another would-be owner, Gardner was on his way to deliver the car to the man who'd purchased it when he got smashed by the semi. Gardner commented that the acceleration was, quote, nothing like ludicrous mode, end quote. He then said, quote, launch control is amazing, but this was otherworldly, end quote. What was left was a mangled trunk and yet a nigh-untouched passenger cabin. Getting smeared by a 40-ton semi in most cars usually means a crushed soda can, not a pristine cabin. Gardner acknowledges as much. He said, quote, I'd be dead, end quote. If he was in one of his family's sports cars, and even if he were in his three-quarter ton truck, he believes he'd have been severely injured. It was estimated the semi hit the Model S at 40 miles per hour. The resulting pile of metal required a truck on each end to yank the two apart. The Tesla sheared the bottom of the truck off. The semi's oil was dripping into the trunk of the Model S with its entire weight on the car. Gardner and his wife independently came to the conclusion that the entire family needed Teslas to protect them. One last bit of awesome, though sadly only a rumor. After dropping some nuggets on us Thursday, Model 3 Owners Club had one more card to play on Friday. In a tweet, they said, quote, Tidbit came in, there's a possibility that pilot production of Model 3s could be destined for Tesla showrooms, end quote. So while we may not get to drive them, hopefully the rest of us peasants can get a chance to see them in person long before the deliveries begin. Check out the links to today's full stories in the show description. If you get some value out of the show, please consider supporting me at patreon.com slash Tidbits. Thanks as usual to my super patrons, John Waltower, Drew Schuyler, and Cookie UK for their support at the $10 plus level. Of course, if you have nothing extra to spare, it's no big deal. You can still support the show for free with positive reviews and by spreading word of the show. If you have feedback for me, the best way to be heard is to tweet at Tesla Tidbits. That's all for today. I'll see you back here again tomorrow. Until then, keep it charged and hit the road.